Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to look at Crisis in Ukraine from Jersey Devil Game Company. It's published by, or it's part of, the Centurion Game Line. It's made in 1983. It's designed by Milton and Neil Rosenberg, developed by Milton and Neil Rosenberg, and Stephen Patrick and Neil Rosenberg. Let's look at the back of the box, see what we have there. Ah, we have nothing on the back of the box. So they must have had like a cover sheet inside the uh, plastic wrap. Anyway, we have on the sides though, they give some listing of information that you would normally find on the back of a game box. Crisis in Ukraine is Jersey Devil Game Company's name for its operational level game of the 1944 encirclement of the 1st Panzer Army. Crisis in the Ukraine is an operational level simulation of the Russian early spring offensive of 1944, during which eight Soviet armies under the direction of Marshal Zhukov encircled the German 1st Panzer Army. The Germans, part of von Manstein's Army Group South, executed a daring and brilliant breakout in blizzard conditions. In this fluid game of attack and counterattack, both players are challenged with offensive and defensive actions. There are options. The game contains a full color 22 by 34 inch game map, 200 game counters, back printed, mounted playing pieces, and a 16 page rules booklet with a historical article by Stephen B. Patrick. And that's pretty much it for the information on the sides of the box. Let's see what's inside the box. Inside the box we'll find the rules. We'll find a little bit of errata, a small errata sheet. We'll find the counters, counter sheet, and we'll find the map. And that's pretty much it. I think it comes with the die, or my copy did. Mine was in shrink wrap, so I'm assuming that all the copies came with a die. So first thing we'll look at is the rule booklet. I think the rules come in at about eight pages. The back of it is pretty much charts and tables. There is an article from Stephen Patrick about the uh, history of the battle. There's also some information, uh, further information on the battle. Or an article on it. And then we start with the rules, which end on page 8. Well, we don't start with them, but just to uh, show you where they end, I guess. Let's look at the sequence of play. I know you're probably not going to be able to read this too well, but that's why I'm here. Game turn sequence outline. We have the Soviet player turn. We have the so uh, supply point determination phase, the initial movement phase, headquarters movement phase, combat phase, mechanized movement phase, disruption removal phase. Then we have the German player turn. We have the initial movement phase, combat phase, mechanized movement phase, disruption removal phase, and the game turn indication phase. Also give you a quick look at uh, <clears throat> some of the information found on each counter. Stay in focus here. There we go. Gives you information like the starting hex, its size, the designation of the unit, its type, attack, defense, strengths, and movement allowance. Some of the other counters here real quick. Hands are not holding on to things today. Let's see here. Pretty much the same information. Front and back. Then we have a headquarters. All right, just went through the sequence of play. We have overruns. Uh, your regular zones of control, movement, combat. We have column shifts, combat. 
We also have divisional integrity, Soviet supply, German supply, and the formation of the pocket. So we have. And then we have the last pages reinforcements, German artillery, weather, garrisons, Soviet command directive, German command restrictions, and the game end and victory conditions. And that's the rule book. Next we have the counters. It's supposed to be, I guess it's 200, not 260. The box is a little beat up there on the end, so it looks like 200 back printed mounted plane pieces. So this is an example of what they look like. Pretty simple graphics for the time. The only thing that I noticed, uh, this game is uh, produced by the same people who did Gala or Gala Beachhead. Um, and they kind of had the same deal with uh, your infantry units have a larger font than your armor and mechanized units, which I find uh, a little hard to read on the mechanized armored units. I wish they were about the same size as they are on the uh, infantry type units, but that's neither here nor there. You got your German units, you got your Soviets. They're a little bit offset on the printing. And then we have some markers, disrupted markers. And I'm not sure what the minus three, minus two is, but um, I'm sure it's a uh, supply or combat related. And they're back printed, back sides. Um, that reduced strength, it looks like. Uh, I think these are uh, breakdown markers for the Germans. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the negative markers are, but anyway, now we'll look at the map. This is a view of the map. Um, has basic colors on it. Pretty typical for the uh, early 1980s. Um, don't know much about the battle, so I can't really point out many of the terrain features uh, that might have some sort of historic significance. Um, over here we have the uh, city or town of Turnipol. Um, the one in the middle of the screen there is Proskurov. Over here we have Venitsa, Venitsa, Zemarinka, and of course I have no idea um, how to pronounce these uh, different places. And we have Mokolev, Podolsky. I heard there was some uh, some errata on the rivers and which one was which, so I'm not going to try to tell you the uh, river names because I think they're wrong in the errata. And then there in the middle of the screen we have the Kamen Kamenets Podolsky. So there must be something to do with the Mogolo Podolsky and the uh, Kamenets Podolsky. In Russian I don't know what Podolsky is but um, there's a couple of them. Anyway the map is printed on a fairly decent yeah. Fairly decent, towards the thin side, I guess, paper. We have a uh, game turn record track over here, and then we have the Soviet supply uh, track over there. Anyway, this is just a brief look at the game Crisis in Ukraine um, by Centurion Games, published by Jersey Devil Game Company in 1983, I believe. Yes. So, um, this kind of give you an idea what the game looks like, if you should run across it, if it Anyway, until next time, we'll see you.